everybody Ann here just sitting here on my porch having coffee with all of you and today it's iced coffee I used some of that milk that was given to me by a very lovely person and some cocoa powder really strong coffee ice of course and some sweetener I just use a generic Splenda because I don't need all that sugar mix it up just shake it up real good oh it is so delicious so today I am inspired to do some kind of maybe cooking, fermenting. Is it going to be wine? Is it going to be vegetables? I know I got to get some sauerkraut going because I have zero sauerkraut. But I've also got some stuff to make some wine. So we'll just see how much of that I get done. Just look at my girl. She's all snuggled up in the blankies, not ready to get going for the day. And it's actually been kind of cool in the morning, so she will stay snuggled up like this until she's darn good and ready to get outside. So I'll just check her and make sure that she's covered up, kind of pull the covers up over her a little bit if she's still sleeping. And she's had no seizures. She has had no problems supporting her hindquarters, nothing like that. I've been keeping a snack by the bedside, and I wake up at 2.45 a.m., which is the time that she had that really bad seizure and just automatic and then she wakes up and I give her a little snack we go back to sleep and the mornings have gone much better so I'm so glad she hasn't had any more of those symptoms lately and here look she's she shifted her focus to me now I can tell that she's almost ready to get up and get going for the day my goodness I love this dog so much she brings me so much joy I just love her well, looks like we're going to do some wine today. Going to make apple wine, and it takes four cups of sugar, two pounds of plain white sugar, one packet of champagne yeast, one gallon of apple juice. You can use apple cider. Just make sure there's no preservatives in it other than vitamin C, and about a half a cup of raisins. I usually use regular raisins, but I don't have any. I just have these golden raisins, and they'll work just as good. The first thing we want to do is sterilize all the equipment. I use one step and I've already prepared a little spray bottle. It's a tablespoon per gallon. I've got a little bit more than that in, in that little spray bottle there, just to be sure. And then I just spray everything down and it is no rinse and you don't have to rinse it off. You don't have to wipe it off. Just spray it on and let it sit for a little bit and then your equipment will be sanitized. I'm also going to sanitize the inside of my initial fermentation vessel that a wonderful subscriber sent me. I'm so happy that I'm able to use it now. Alright, now we're going to add the apple juice. And a lot of times I'll just add three quarters of what I'm going to actually use and then put the rest in the refrigerator and use it when I rack it. But I'm just pouring it all in because I don't really have any adequate refrigeration. So we're just adding it all at once. That means we're going to have a little bit extra when I add this to the one gallon carboy because you add the sugar in it and, uh, and the raisins and whatnot. So you're going to have a little extra. That's okay. We can add more apple juice later on. Now for the sugar. All right, you can open it up. Yeah, you can open it up. <laughs> Goodness, having a little trouble there, are you, Anne's tiny life? Yep, just gonna pour the whole thing in. Two pounds is four cups. And then we are just going to give it a nice stir. Stir it up, break up any big particles if there are any and then I'm just going to carry it over to my cooktop. Next I'm going to chop up, it's going to be about a half a cup per gallon and I'm just making one gallon this time. Just going to chop these up, it doesn't have to be perfect, you don't have to get them all chopped but just get quite a few of them chopped or at least you know little holes poked in them and this is what's going to feed the wine as it ferments and it also helps with flavor. So lo not looking for perfection here. Just chop it up as best you can. And then you can move on to the next part. Now I'm just going to carry it on over to the pot and put all the raisins in. Yep, get them all in there. And next I'm going to light the cooktop and it's going to be on low heat because we're not going to boil this. We're just going to heat it up just a little bit to melt the sugar and give it a good stir. 
There you go, stir it up really good. It's all melted, awesome. And now I'm gonna carry it over and let it cool because you don't wanna pitch your yeast when it's too hot, basically about 94 to 100 degrees. And there's the yeast. Because if it's too hot, it'll kill the yeast. And you don't want that. Then just give it a good stir, a really good stir. Get lots of oxygen in there. Plenty of oxygen is needed at this stage. Yep, just stir it up, make some bubbles. And it's looking pretty good. Next, I am just taking this brand new clean white t-shirt and I'm just gonna drape that over the top, make sure it doesn't have any yucky stuff on it. Just kind of center it, center it over the pot. I'm gonna just use a little bit of twine. If you have a big enough rubber band, you could use that too. And I'm just gonna secure it. You don't have to do this, but I do it just because I'm clumsy and I don't wanna knock the thing off the top of it. And there you go. Doesn't that look so cute? It's like a little, a little prezzy. And now I'm just gonna carry it over here and this is where it's going to cool. And it's gonna sit here until I take the next step. Now that wine is gonna stay just like it is for the next I don't know how many days. Um, it's a lot hotter here and I'm used to making wine in an air conditioned apartment. So the increased heat is going to probably make it ferment too fast, which isn't really a good thing because you can get some off flavors and stuff like that. That's why I decided to go with apple wine for the first time making wine out here because I didn't expend a lot of money and I'm not gonna be ruining a bunch of fruit. So once a day for the next, I usually do it for about five days, but I may only have to do it for a couple days. I'm gonna get in there, take the little t-shirt off and stir it really good. Just stir it and get a bunch of oxygen going on in there and uh, cover it back up. And once it kind of starts settling just a little bit, that's the time that I'm going to put it into its uh, fermentation vessel and put the airlock on it and uh, then let it ferment the rest of the way. And then once it stops bubbling, I will uh, rack it off. And we'll do all of that in another video. So I'll give you like periodic updates to let you know how it's going and what it looks like and just see how this goes. I can't wait to find out how this is gonna taste. Look at that. It has only been in here for, I don't know, one, two hours tops and it is already starting to bubble. Perfect. Look what's come back to visit me. My little friend, Mr. Skink. Look at, Betty's just laying there watching it. Can't be bothered by it. That's actually a good sign because I haven't seen them in several days and then I saw that big snake out there. What's it gonna do? Will Betty kill it? Oh, it's coming closer. Coming closer. Oh, huh? <laughs> She's not even moving. Maybe she doesn't even see it. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Nope, not towards the screen door. Nope, nope. There it goes. Phew, it is a scorcher out today. I think it's like 88, 89 degrees, maybe 90. It's hot, so I'm almost inclined to bring that wine out here on the porch because I really don't want it to ferment too fast. But you know what, I, I gotta just figure this out as I go. And there's been times when I've made apple jalapeno wine and with fresh jalapenos and it is just so delicious. It's really good, it's surprisingly good. So I may try that the next time. Anyway, I have a bunch of vegetables. I've got some cabbage. I need to make some. Oh, my little buddy's back. <laughs> that skink just keeps visiting me. Oh, no. Anyway, so about the vegetables. I'm going to make some sauerkraut. I don't know if I'll film the sauerkraut because I think you guys have already kind of seen me do sauerkraut. I might throw that in as well. But um, I've got a bunch of other vegetables that I want to put in those little fermentation jars. Well, I've got the fermentation lids and the mason jars. So I may start some of those tomorrow. So be looking for that in the next day or two, tops, I think. And we're going to see how that goes. I love fermenting stuff. It's a great way to preserve things, and it's easy. And the vegetables turn out just really, really delicious. So 
Anyhow, you know what? It's too hot to do anything today. I may end up going over to Mr. Lucas's and see if I can get some water from him and just water these plants because they are just getting so dry and it's not going to rain for several more days. So I've got to do something. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.